This is a Fox News election alert. Pennsylvania goes to Donald Trump. Donald Trump is the president of the United States. <sighs> it happened, didn't it? It's not a nightmare that I'm in. It really happened. I have some feels to get off of my chest. I need to put it somewhere. Um, so if you're all electioned out, which I totally understand, just a heads up, you can bounce. Bounce, 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 like murder, she rolled. First off, I want to make it clear that we should respect other people's opinions, but we shouldn't have to respect uneducated opinions. And this video, Trumpocalypse, is filled with them. Lacey Green is doing her best to push the false narrative that a Trump presidency will result in something like this. You've heard it before, liberals claiming that the world is going to be destroyed, America is doomed, and there is a Trumpocalypse among us. I created a simple test that proves otherwise. Now here's what I want you to do. Go find a window. Any window, just go and look out that window. Step two, recognize that the world isn't burning and that you are okay. Congratulations, you've determined the Trumpocalypse is false. Now let's move back to Lacey Green. What bothers me the most about Lacey Green's Trumpocalypse video is the utter distortion of facts. I mean, a lot of things she says are just outright wrong. Basic research before the video could have shown that it's wrong. But sadly enough, her audience is young people, and a lot of young people tend to believe anything she says, which is very unfortunate, and this is why I'm making this video. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. My sweet sex posse babes. All right, guys, what I'm going to do is analyze this video basically from the beginning to the end and point out the many fallacies found within it. So let's begin. The Trumpocalypse has arrived. Y'all know me well enough. I value equality. I think it's so important. Inclusion, human dignity, um, avoiding World War III. I'm sorry, it's kind of hard to say that you value inclusion and equality when your video is basically slamming an entire group of people because they're Trump supporters. It just seems very contradictory, and th this is just something minor, but let's move on. I am so sad, and I am so angry, and I know that for many of you, your spirit has been crushed by this whole thing. If your spirit is going to be crushed after an election, you need a stronger spirit. And I'm not saying this to be rude, but it's actually true. Think about it. Your side just lost. Well, if you're gonna have someone sit here and tell you that your spirit is crushed and you can't do anything about it, well, how are you ever going to advance? If you have a strong spirit, you'll actually accomplish more, get more done, be strong, push through. Then again, liberals do tend to discourage self-empowerment, so it would make sense to have someone sitting here telling you how you feel and why you can't do anything. Moving on. So, it's not really clear what exactly the future holds for us yet. That's exactly the point. We aren't sure what the future holds. So instead of creating Trumpocalypse videos that claim the future is going to be bleak and lead to World War III, we need to calm down and give the man a chance to run the country. I mean, whether or not you agree with Donald Trump, it's fair to say we should hold back on the criticism until the man has done something in office worth criticizing. Moving on. But if we go by the election cycle, things do look bleak. Millions of us, myself included, could lose our health insurance. Before Lacey threw in the false claim that millions of people are going to lose their health insurance under a Donald Trump presidency, she should have read the following statement found on his website. The statement is pretty simple. Trump's goal is to broaden healthcare access, making healthcare more affordable and improve the quality of care available to all Americans. How that translates to millions losing their healthcare is beyond me. There can be serious cuts to scientific research, to climate change and clean energy efforts, to government programs for our sick and our poor, to education. Planned Parenthood will be target number one. 
Okay, so specifically concerning Planned Parenthood, I want to show you guys this. So this is Lacey Green's LinkedIn account where it specifically states that she's working for Planned Parenthood, which means she's getting paid by them, there's going to be some bias. Now, let's talk about the other social programs. In an attempt to make Donald Trump look evil, Lacey mentions that there's going to be cuts to programs that will help the sick and the poor, but in reality, she's talking about welfare. Let's talk about welfare. The annual federal budget for welfare is $1 trillion. That's $1 trillion of your taxpayer dollars going to a program that's supposed to be fighting poverty. But in reality, it doesn't seem to do that. Take a look. This graph shows that as welfare spending has increased throughout the years, the poverty rate has basically remained stagnant. There hasn't really been any improvement, but yet we keep pumping in more and more money into the program. So wouldn't it make sense to cut back on a failing program that's costing taxpayers almost a trillion dollars? Look at this next graph. So this graph demonstrates the deadweight loss of welfare, and the deadweight loss, as referred to in economics, can also be known as allocative inefficiency or excess burden. And basically what this means is that you're losing economic efficiency when the equilibrium for a good or a service is not achieved or is not achievable. So what this is demonstrating is the fact that we are pumping money into the welfare program and the good or the product we're supposed to be getting out, a lack of poverty, or really anything else positive you can think of is not being achieved. We could definitely look into this longer, but I don't want to turn this into an economic lesson. So let's move on to the climate. Lacey mentions how Donald Trump plans to cut climate change research and certain energy programs, but conveniently seems to leave out the fact that these programs have been costing people jobs and the taxpayers a lot of money. In fact, this much money. The United States Environmental Protection Agency, or commonly known as the EPA, costs taxpayers roughly $8.2 billion a year. The Department of Energy, on the other hand, costs taxpayers roughly $30.6 billion a year. I agree with Lacey that the environment is an important issue. I mean, who wants to be walking around in streets like this? However, the Department of Energy and the EPA have turned into terrible bureaucracies that do more damage than they do good. Let me prove this to you. This Washington Post article shines light on the fact that the EPA was trying to shut down coal power plants because they produce too many emissions. The effects of this measure by the EPA were horrific. Tens of thousands of coal miners and power plant employees lost their jobs since this measure was enacted in 2008. That's the price we'll have to pay to save the earth, a lot of people will say, but in reality, these measures did nothing. The power plants that the EPA shut down that put thousands of coal miners out of business accounted for only 0.01% of the carbon dioxide added to the earth annually. 0.01%. According to the Washington Times, these EPA regulations will have zero effect on climate change. While the EPA is trying so hard to put coal mines out of business that really only produce 0.01% of global emissions, China is producing almost double the CO2 emissions we are in America. So the question remains, why should the EPA and the Department of Energy penalize industry and coal mines in America for producing a tiny amount of emissions when China is allowed to run rampant as they contribute more and more to the growing climate problems the Earth faces? Okay, so now that we understand the Department of Energy and the EPA are very ineffective, let's talk about the Department of Education, which will be easy to prove ineffective. The United States spends more money on education than any other country in the world. Those are taxpayer dollars going to education, so therefore, we should be getting quality education. However, that's not the case. According to WhiteHouse.gov, the U.S. government spends $77.4 billion on the Department of Education, yet the United States ranks a mere 36th overall in the world for education. China, who ranks number one in overall education, spent roughly 388 billion yuan towards their education. That can be converted to 55 billion U.S. dollars, which means China spends $21 billion less on education than the United States, but demonstrates better results than the United States by far. What I think Lacey doesn't seem to realize is that the United States is currently operating in a deficit. Nearly a $20 trillion deficit, to be exact. With that being said, it's not always a bad thing to cut back on programs, especially when the programs have been proven to be ineffective. Let's continue. My LGBT family now lives under a vice president who literally believes in electrocuting the gay out of children. Okay, I can't stress this enough. Always 
fact check your information because what Lacey just said is absolutely false. When I fact checked Lacey's claim, I came across this. Pence never stated that he supported the use of electric shock or gay conversion therapy. I'm not sure where Lacey found that false claim about Mike Pence, but if she would have done a little bit of research beforehand, she would have known it was false. President Trump, he is proudly endorsed by the KKK. Well, actually, Trump was endorsed by a KKK newspaper, and this is what his campaign had to say about it. Mr. Trump and the campaign denounces hate in any form. This publication is repulsive, and their views do not represent the tens of millions of Americans who are uniting behind our campaign. So if your argument is that a candidate is evil because they uncontrollably get endorsed by a hate group, what do you have to say about this? North Korea? Putin? Yeah, that's so wrong. I'm not even going to spend time looking that up. Trump never got endorsed by North Korea and Putin. How the f did this happen? I'll show you how it happened. The American people democratically voted under the parameters set in Article 2 of the Constitution, and Donald Trump won the presidency. So there you go. Our political establishment failed us. Once the shock of this all wears off, Anger and resentment may set in, <laughs> like some people we know. Uh, again, Lacey, you're subjugating an entire group of people, and that's exactly what you're preaching against, so it doesn't make sense. We have to use our anger to help each other. I'm trying to think, who was that last guy who used anger to help everyone? Um, oh, yeah. I want to ask you guys to think about one question. What can we do to channel pain and anger and resentment? And my best answer would have to be, suck it up. It's four years. We're going to be okay. I, I, I promise. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'm going to ask you for one favor, a like and a subscription. But you don't have to. Your choice. I'll see you guys later.